Today is October the 3rd, 2009, Saturday evening, about 8.30, 8.40. We had talked the other night about the fact that we're living in days similar to that of Noah. We talked about the depravity of man, and we talked about the remedy for sin. Tonight, we're going to talk about something a little different. Mark wanted to talk about the destruction of man. Now we know that in Noah's day there was by all recorded history several billion people living on the face of the earth. It wasn't a small populated group of people. And uh, the earth's population has become so engrossed in abominable sin that God destroyed everyone on the face of the earth except eight souls Noah and his family that was it but the good news is there were eight souls that were saved out of those massive massive group of people eight souls were saved Noah found grace There are many people, millions, billions of people, living on the face of the earth today. <clears throat> Scripture tells us, though, that there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So not all men are going to be destroyed. Only some men are going to be destroyed. And we know that Revelation tells us that in heaven, in the last days, there's going to be people from every tongue, every people, and every nation. There's going to be a lot of people in heaven. Now, let's con- let's make this balance in our assessment. Bible also tells us that God's the way that leads to destruction. Many there be that find it. Narrow is the way that leads to life eternal, and few that be that find it. Now the question is, who are the finders? Who are the finders? The finders are those who have been given spiritual sight to see them. Spiritual things. They've been quickened by the power of the Holy Spirit. Those who are without excuse before God are going to be judged according to God's holy and perfect law. But they are absent of any grace, any of God's grace. That's why the whole idea of common grace is such a, a, a lie. Grace is not common. Grace is uncommon. Grace is amazing. Grace is particular. It is not universal. And that's exactly where common grace leads in the final um, scheme of things. But the destruction of man is a promise by God to all of those who would reject his son. Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a main thing? The destruction of man is not a pretty thing. It's not something that we even want to enjoy talking about or thinking about. The day when billions will be cast into outer darkness. (coughs) And there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Kiss the sun lest he be angry in the way. Now there's a great, great consolation for God's people who are trusting in the precious blood of Jesus Christ to cover all of their sins and to present them spotless before God. For those who have blasphemed God, mock his son, the Bible says that God is going to hold them in derision 
saying that's going to be a sad day when they cry from the mountains, the rocks of the mountains to fall upon them and to hide them from the face of the Son of God. The destruction of this earth is inevitable. It is a non-reversible decree by God. He promised that this earth would never be destroyed again by a flood by putting the rainbow in the clouds, but he said it would be destroyed by fire. Now, great Babylon is going to fall. And when it falls, many, many millions of people are going to die. This earth is going to see destruction and havoc and death as it has never seen before. During the great and terrible day of the Lord, people don't believe it. People don't believe the Bible. There's even people that deny that the, Bible, that the earth is going to be destroyed. Van Impe is one of them. The Bible says that it's going to be folded up like an old rug. It's going to be. Uh, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth where you dwell with righteousness. But that old earth, this old earth as we know it now, is all going to be burned up, destroyed by fire. We're talking tonight about the destruction, not only of man, but the destruction of this planet. You see all of these pictures and videos of nuclear holocaust and what a nuclear bomb would do. But it's not going to take a nuclear bomb to burn the earth up. It's going to take the finger of God, the very finger of God. <clears throat> Man has been given ample warning of the impending doom of the earth. But yet, he goes on in his rebellion and his sin. And he laughs and scoffs and blasphemes the holy name of God. And he denies the word of God. And he takes on other forms of uh, other gods. <clears throat> We're in a polyistic society where we don't want to believe the Bible as it relates to what Christ said about himself. Christ there was no one more exclusive than Christ when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Everybody's trying to climb up some other way like a thief and a robber. The impending doom of the earth is, is, is um, certain. And people are living as if they were going to live forever. Eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Well, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. And oh, the weeping. And oh, the wailing. Just think of what happened during 9-11 how people for a few days were in shock seeing that those two planes going into the Twin Towers and seeing that plane going into the Pentagon seeing that other plane crash into the ground that will be absolutely nothing in comparison to the great and last and terrible day of the Lord There's a scripture that says, Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him, him while he is near. <clears throat> all of God's sheep will seek him. And all of God's sheep will find him because he has found them first. He's found them in a waste howling wilderness. He's breathed into their dead bones life. And... Uh, 
is a good comfort for us to know that even though we may see this world burn up, we may see, we may be living in the time of the destruction of the world, but yet, for God's elect, we're going to be ushered into the presence of our King. And we're going to be present at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And we're going to sit down with all of God's elect. And we're going to be praising and singing, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor and power and wisdom. Worthy is the Lamb that is able to open the book and loose the seals thereof. He was slain for every tongue, every nation, and every kindred. The destruction of the world as we know it is imminent. But the, the eternal life of the sheep is also in it. The eternal life of the child of God is a decree by God that we were chosen in Him before the foundation of the world. Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. Satan said, I will rise and be as God. Satan, um, a lot of people forget that hell was made for the devil and his angels. Satan does not have a very good prognosis. <laughs> his, his eternal doom is is imminent. As are all of those who blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that you know that God will not be mocked. See, God has given Jesus a name that's greater than any name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Some people refuse to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Some people refuse to even give acknowledgement that Jesus Christ uh, is who he said he was. And so those people are going to be taken and destroyed. And all of the non-elect angels will be taken and cast into the bottomless pit with Satan. Satan and his angels. And all of those who blaspheme God will be cast into the bottomless pit with Satan and his angels. What a, what a horrendous turn of events that will be for those who have lived lusciously on the face of the earth who have tasted of the banquetings and the bounties of this earth will be in utter torment and torture forever eternally hard for us to grasp what that must be we can't even fathom and put our minds around that even if they would have to suffer for that way for one minute to think that they would suffer that way for eternity is beyond the realm of our thinking. But thanks be to God who's given us the victory through Lord Jesus Christ. He has purchased eternal redemption for us through His Son. And we have no merits of our own to claim we come wholly in Jesus' name and realize that He has won the victory for all of His people who have been given faith to believe upon the Son. So much of what society wants to do today is talk about how things are unfair, unfair, unfair. Jesus has said in his word come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest cast your yoke upon me and learn of me for I am meek and lonely now that's quite a that's quite a petition that's quite a statement to 
those who are me who are heavy laden. Come unto me, all ye that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Cast your yoke upon me, and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That's what Christ said Himself. So if you are heavy burdened hearts today, there is a great, great um, proclamation by Jesus Christ Himself to you. Come unto me, all ye that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Father, we pray that you would take this discussion and use it for your glory regarding the destruction, the imminent destruction of man and the imminent paradise for all of your people. We pray in Christ's name.